back in 1962, when I was working in 62, I was working at this uh, repatriation hospital. Um, maybe 63, I forget about then. Anyway, <clears throat> I uh, would would see the new patients coming in and quickly, uh, you know, interview them and assign them to a, a young doctor. And at lunch, I would meet with a psychologist who had also uh, interviewed them, you see. And he'd say, oh, you're brilliant. You can spell a hallucination. You can sniff out a delusion, you know, your diagnosis. But did you know this one played the piano? This one grew champion camellias? And I said, no. He said, you don't know the good things about the patient. I said, no, I'm a doctor. I'm trained to find the bad things. And, it, and it, it bugged me because he was right. I started to look at what I was missing of what these people could do. Not what they couldn't, but what they could. You know, and then uh, some years later, <clears throat> well, quite a few years later, I'm, I'm in uh, Nova Scotia early one morning in a rented car. You'll see why I say rented. And uh, I'm f wanting to photograph the dawn coming up over the sea, you see? And I back the car into what I think is, is a bit of dark grass. It turns out to be this deep pond. And the car is just balancing like this. And I, I think any moment it's just slide in, me with it. So I managed to open the door, and my camera bag, I threw it out there, and I managed to get around the door and somehow get onto the land, you see? Then I walked quite a way till I found a tow truck who came back, he took one look at the car, he got out his, you know, his hawser, he put it on the front of the car on the hook there, and 30 seconds it was out of the water. And he said to me, it's a good thing you had two wheels on dry land. That was a metaphor I was looking for. So what I've looked for ever before that, but ever since, particularly but with, with sufferers, is what is the two wheels on dry land? I know what you can't do, that's why you're here, but what can you do? You know, especially what can you do in terms of creativity? What can you do? So I asked them, can you play the piano? Do you do this? Do you do that? What can you do? Because that will, that's their strength. That's where they've invested their personality. That will be their salvation. Music will be your salvation, I can say. We may have to get you to re refine, to find again your love of music, which the teacher may have taken away from you. But it'll be there. You know? And sometimes, I have one woman, she's been playing the violin for 50 years, and it completely loved her... her, her, her completely fallen out of love with with music and she had cancer, she was in terrible trouble. But and I knew it was going to be a hard thing to get through 30, 40 years of teachers and conductors and competitions and so forth. So okay, what what's another industry? We found the baritone horn. So for money she played the the uh, violin, but for herself, for her own status, she played the baritone horn. But muse, and now she plays the violin because the music to the horn was her salvation, now it is the violin once again is her salvation. Music is her salvation. So what can you do? I remember once being in a doctor's office and there was a young man there about 14 who couldn't even sit up. He was, I'd see him a few times just lying back all the time terribly afflicted, I won't go into the disease, but terribly afflicted. And the doctor says, obviously he just doesn't want to live, he's just a, you know, it's, 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 it's just a terrible state. So I said to him, I said, what do you really love? And he sits up in the bed, he says, my guitars. He said, I got 14 guitars. I got a this, I got a that, I got a this. I, I, I love guitars. That was his thing. That was his two wheels. Everybody's got two wheels on dry land. I knew men in terrible trouble, you know, financial, 
you know, heart disease and, and wife and daughters, oh, all sorts of stuff. Get him playing the tuba, whew, he changes. That's his, that's his salvation. But we had to find it was music. We had to find it was the tuba. We had to find it was that tuba with that mouthpiece played like this, playing that. Yeah, and that's his salvation. <clears throat> so if he calls me and says, I'm in terrible terrible, play your tuba, call me back. Take two tubas, call me in the morning. Yeah. So everybody has that. Everybody. So that's the two wheels on dry land. I look with everyone I work with. I'm always looking for the two wheels. I know what the diagnosis is, but I want the positive diagnosis. I want the two wheels on dry land. And everybody has them. Now you can say, well, what about other activities? What about tennis? What about sport? What about gardening? It doesn't seem to be the same thing because it doesn't involve the same degree of creativity. It doesn't seem to come from the, from the muse, from the gen. Uh, it's got to be really what we tend to call the, the high arts. You know, uh, I put photography in there, music, uh, uh, painting and sort of sculpture, dance, poetry, literature, maybe, one, maybe something else I've left out. But it, you know, you can sometimes squeeze in Ikebana, depending on, sometimes you can, but it usually is what we call the, the higher arts, that that's, that's what makes them different, that they, they come deeper from the muse, you see, and, and, and it's getting that muse up and out, which is the healing that we have, that we can give ourselves, you see. Then you've got four wheels on dry land. I saw this man in England about 30 something years ago and he was, he was Indian, he lived, he lived most of his life, in, I think all his life in, in, in England and he was a very confirmed bachelor and he goes over to India to meet relatives for a month and soon after he's in this little village where they came from there was this blind man who was a psychic so he goes along for the hell of it and, and what this psychic would do is he'd listen, tune in in some way and he'd reach behind him, because without looking he was blind anyway, and he'd, and he'd take a piece of a strip of parchment which had these very, very old sayings on them going back hundreds of years. And, and, and he'd give it to the person to read it. He said, this is your future. And it says, you will be married within 30 days. And I mean, there's a confirmed bachelor. No way. He said, on the 30th day, I got married. He said, what a catastrophe. He said, so I bring my wife back to England. It has been a disaster. But it was correct. It did happen. So what, is, what are these two wheels on dry land? I discover it's poetry. He's never written any poetry in his life. But it... He said, I'm a sportsman. He said, I'm not a, I'm not a poet. I said, well, you know, that's what, that's what my uh, uh, parchment says. Give it, give it, whatever. He comes back a week later or two. He says, he said, I feel fantastic. He said, I, I, I did what you suggested. He said, I wrote a poem and my life has changed. And he wrote a poem about badminton. I wish I had, he said, like, yeah. You throw the ball, you, you hit it up in the air and it comes down and then it looks at you and it does this. He wrote this whole long poem about badminton. And he said, uh, my wife and I are different. And, and I saw him sometime in the future, he said, things have been fine ever since. <laughs> I forgot whether we continued the poetry or not. But, uh, but everyone, everyone has that. Everybody. Mm. And sometimes... It's not the one they think it is. You know, it's been imposed in them rather than what they... So, so before often they, they're made to play the cello, they really want to play the violin, but, and all sorts, but, but it's, it's always there. Then, of course, you can also help them now with the poetry, you know, and, and, and with the drums, to, or whatever it may be, you know, that's, that's, that's ongoing work. But always, the, the work is not to make the poem better 
or the or, or the drumming better. It's to make them uh, more releasing the muse through it, because it's the muse that heals. I had a woman who had she'd been married to a, to a doctor for I don't know um, maybe twenty five more 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 years, and she comes to me. She's pretty distressed. We just you know, and and I discover that she used to be a dancer in, in a major dance troupe and her husband never even knew. She'd stopped it before she even met him and had just cancelled that part of her life. Got her back dancing and she changes. Now remember, there was one man, a dentist who came to me and he was about 40 something, came from way down south and he had uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, motor neuron disease, Lou Gehrig's disease, they usually call it in America. And he had pronounced foot drop and had been given um, a very short time to live by one of the most prestigious hospitals in the country. And he was just a bachelor sitting at home, watching television, smoking, drinking, of course, obviously on disability for life, and, and waiting to die. So someone sent him up to me, I don't know how he got there, they put a little backpack on him and he shuffled in with this pronounced foot drop and he was there for a day. Now what am I to do? And I thought about the two wheels on dry land. What are his two wheels on dry land? I realised that dentists are frustrated sculptors. They like to make little crowns and so forth. So I had him, I had him singing of course, but while he was singing, to, to make these little models out of Play-Doh, which I had there. And he made little birds, little tiny things, an inch or two in size. And little tiny things. And he was doing this all day and, and singing. And, he, and I said, now when you go back, take a pottery class. Learn how to work with clay, whatever you do, and so forth. And he called me up about six months later. He said, I've got no foot drop. I'm feeling fine. I'm... I'm He's doing, doing great. And he got married, he stopped drinking, he stopped smoking. His life turned around. And um, then about six years later, he calls me up. He says, my foot drops come back, it's all come back. I said, well, what's happened to your pottery? He said, I gave all that up. I said, well, are you seeing? I said, well, do it again. And he called up some time later, he said, it's, I'm, I'm fine again. Now that's, I, I still get... Uh, Christmas cards or something like every year or two. It must be 30 years. But he found his two wheels on dry land. Which of course is more than just the, the sculpture and whatever he did. It, it's what it did inside him. It actuated his innate healing power. His desire to live, to embrace all of life.